Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today, as you can see in front of you, we've got all these husky uh, gauges here. So, file gauges. Uh, there's quite a few in the range. Are they gimmicks or are they really uh, great things to use? I've never met a hand filer that's, that can do a perfect job. Most people get a brand new chain, they'll file it, it's okay, and normally the filing will deteriorate or they'll get off angle and that will deteriorate as the chain gets filed smaller and smaller. So what's a great idea is that if you've got one of these gauges and every, say, th three or four times that you're filing, that you could use one of these to make sure that uh, it's within the specifications that you haven't gone off track. I've gone off track filing and, you know, instead of being 25 degrees, I could be 30 degrees or the other way around. Or I'm filing too deep into the gullet and not enough at the top of the tooth because you're supposed to be around the 20% above the file is meant to be kept about 20% above the tooth. And that's exactly what these file uh, guides do. It keeps that file at the right height. Some people use them religiously and use nothing else. That's okay. It depends what you like. Now, this particular one here, this is for 3.8 Husqvarna file gauge, C, uh, C83, C85, 5.5 millimeter or 732 file, Husqvarna's X cut. Now, it's written on the back on this one here. You'll see 3.8.83.85 on one side. You can put the file in there, 7.32. On the other side, 5.5 millimetres. So that's a great idea too. You'll see these two arrows. Now, when you fit that over your chainsaw uh, bar, make sure that those arrows are pointing forwards. We've got one actually set up here. We'll come over here. So this is a Husqvarna's X-Cut. And remember I said this is the front. So they're the two arrows. So it's just a matter of sitting that over the top. And it fits in really well. And you would hold your file at this position right in the middle. So if we bring the camera over there, that's how you... Don't do it that way or that way. Hold it right in the middle and proceed to file. And that will file at the right height. So it's a great way to run it over the chain and bring it back in check. The other thing that you've got on these, because this is a combination version and you can buy versions uh, that have just got the actual roller guide, but you've got the progressive depth gauge. You've got the hard and soft setting. They work really great. It's just a matter of placing it over the top. If the raker depth gauge... Uh, protrudes then you can use this tool uh, to check and run the file over the top and place it back over I think it's reasonably hard but uh, yeah look I, I tend to just file and just place this over the top the still uh, progressive depth gauge is definitely harder than this material and you can run the file over the top you can probably run the file over the top but I don't use these that much. I've only got a few Husqvarna chains. So they're not a gimmick. And I've never met a hand filer that can do a perfect job uh, from start of the, the start of the life of the chain to the end of the life without going off track. And these will bring you back in, uh, in, in check. So, yeah, highly recommended if you've got a Husqvarna uh, chain and use one of these guides the combination one's best i tend a lot of people say oh yes i take one and i use them out in the field i never ever sharpen chains in the field ever never have and i don't think i ever will because when i go out in the field to cut wood i go out there to cut wood not to sharpen chains I normally have a plastic container, a bit of an ice cream, small ice cream uh, container, has a lid on it. And I normally have about a half a dozen chains in there, plus the one that's on the chainsaw. So I've got about six or seven chains. 
And if one chain gives me two, three, four uh, tankfuls of uh, fuel, when I change the oil and fuel, I go, oh, this is not cutting too good. Just swap the chain over. When I get home, could be a couple of days later, I'll sharpen the chains when I've got plenty of time. Not going to spend five minutes doing that. Now, because I sharpen the chains, I don't let the chains deteriorate that much. Most of the time when I come home and I use this file guide, this vice, you find out that when I grab the chain, that when you put the chain on, I'm only filing, I'll come home, I'll clean all the chains, I'll make sure they're all nice and clean, put them on here, clamp it all up. Normally I'm running the file maybe two times over the tooth. I don't let the chains deteriorate that bad that they really require major filing. Just a matter of changing it out in the field once I feel that it's starting to drop off. If you're using a blunt chain, you're loading up your chainsaw, everything is under stress. The best thing to do that if you feel that your chips are starting to turn to sawdust, change the chain and you'll reduce all the load on the entire chainsaw and everything else, the bar, the chain, everything, the clutch, the sprocket, the motor, everything will benefit if you put a, a sharp chain on. And as I said, if you're filling up with gas or oil, uh, it doesn't take long to put a new chain on or a sharpened chain. Anyway, those husky gauges are not gimmicks. They work really good and they're great to use as a maintenance tool to make sure that if you get off track, they'll bring you back uh, to the right angles and the right depths. Only one other thing to say uh, is that these Husqvarna uh, gauges sometimes won't fit over other manufacturers' chains. A little bit of a tight fit and they don't fit properly. So I'd probably avoid using them on other chains like I've got a steel chain and it's semi chisel and it just didn't fit properly it was a bit of a tight fit so it's yeah because the rivets are a little bit bigger in diameter and the geometry is almost identical with most one chainsaw manufacturer to the others but there can be a little, few little differences in the the thickness of the linkages or there's just some little bit of differences and that's why it's probably not best to use these on uh, other brand chains so you know if you've got Oregon get Oregon tools if you've got steel get steel tools stick with the, what the manufacturer recommend and you can't go wrong and as I said these are a great aid in making sure that you are on track thanks for watching bye for now